And look, Donald Trump's not done. He would ban abortion nationwide. Yes, even here in Pennsylvania, if he were successful. He would restrict access to birth control, put IVF treatments at risk, and force states to monitor women's pregnancies. Just Google Project 2025. Read the plans for yourself. And let us agree, one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree the government shouldn't be telling people what to do. I know politics is a dirty game, but it is pretty damn pathetic when you have to repeatedly, continually, nonstop lie about your opponent in order to even have a shot at winning. And that is what Kamala does. That's what Biden does and did for the past four years. It's all the Democrats have done for the past nine years. For the past nine years, the mainstream Democrat Party platform has been wear not Donald Trump. That's literally all that they have to offer. And the entire offering is built on a mountain of lies. I share this every time I share my walkaway story. If Donald Trump were as bad as you say he is, you wouldn't have to lie about him. If Donald Trump were actually Hitler or anything even remotely comparable to Hitler, you wouldn't have to lie about him. You could just accurately report what he said within its full context. You could accurately report what he did and it would stand on its own and it would be compelling. But they repeatedly lie about him and they had me. They had me for a good four years. And I know what it's like to realize you've been lied to and then to start actually looking into all of these things and realize over and over and over it's all been a lie. It's all been perfectly snipped just so, or completely exaggerated, or just outright lied about. And this is an example of an outright lie. You show me where Donald Trump has said that he will come after your contraception. You show me where Donald Trump has said that he will monitor women's pregnancies. You show me where Donald Trump has said that he will make a national abortion ban. He hasn't. Donald Trump has been very explicit that he is aligned, actually, with a majority of Americans on abortion. Now, I happen to disagree, but he's aligned with a majority of Americans on abortion. He believes that abortion should be permitted up to what he calls a reasonable amount of weeks. I would disagree. But Roe needed to fall. It needed to be left up to the states because Roe was an unconstitutional decision. And a movement against access to abortion for women grew up, flourished around a single target. And what was that target? It was nine unelected ju judges decide this question for the nation. It should be decided by the people's elected representatives. Mm -hmm by the members of the state legislature. Mm -hmm. So the, the backlash, I think there might have been a backlash in any case, but I think it took on steam mm -hmm. because Roe v. Wade, unelected Supreme Court judges, that was the problem. You can't just say, oh, Donald Trump is going to do this baselessly because you hate the guy. You can't just do that. Why didn't Donald Trump create a national abortion ban in his first term? Now, that would have been unconstitutional, but you're claiming this guy's a dictator. You're claiming this guy is, is next to Hitler. Uh, someone that evil, someone that tyrannical, why didn't he create a ban in his first term? Why didn't he come after contraception in his first term? Why didn't he monitor women's pregnancies in his first term? Why not? A better question... Why didn't Obama, any Democrat president, codify Roe when they promised that they would? Why? Do you ever ask yourself that? I actually wish that Donald Trump or a president in the very, very near future would work towards a, uh, a national abortion ban because I'm ardently pro-life. 
But that's not the reality of the situation. And he still has my full support. It's ridiculous the way that the left just continues to lie about him. And it's so funny to watch because you'll see ultra conservatives, which I would actually consider myself, very, very socially conservative people who will claim that Donald Trump is is pro-abortion and he's not hard enough on abortion. But then you have all of legacy media, Kamala, all the Democrats claiming that he is some would-be handmaid's tale imposing dictatorial force. Which is it? Because both sides are screaming at each other two opposing things about a single man. And I just find that very interesting. Very interesting. I'm sad that women continue to fall for this stuff. I'm sad that what amounts to women's rights in 2024 is literally just the right to end the life of your own offspring. That makes me really, really sad. Because this galvanizes... Women are absolutely, positively rabid to have the ability to end the lives of their own offspring. I find that awful. And... Nowhere do you see the Democrats engage in a good faith conversation about abortion. It is always jumping straight to the extremes, the very rare occurrences of uh, unwanted pregnancy from assault. It's always purposely conflating the conversation of miscarriage with abortion and claiming that women are dying from miscarriages due to abortion uh, restrictions, which they're not, because every single law allows for care following the death, the natural death of fetus. It's always just lies. To galvanize you emotionally, it's never just an actual conversation on abortion. Just like it's never an actual, honest conversation on Donald Trump. It's never a a good faith, factually based uh, condemnation of him. Ever. Ever. And I want to point out to Kamala and everyone else that uh, even if abortion is decided federally, it is still the government making a decision about your body, even if it's the federal government. And when you are pregnant, it's not just your body. You have a whole individuated, genetically distinct living human inside of you. And that should matter. That actually should matter. We should do everything we can to protect the absolute weakest, most vulnerable amongst us, those who literally have no voice. Because if they are left open to attack, to the point of fatality, if they are left open to attack in the worst way possible, then all of our oppressed groups, all of our minority groups, everybody is left open to attack because the most vulnerable, the weakest, the youngest among us are not protected. And if the right to life isn't fundamental and foundational and protected, then everyone else's, all of our rights, including the right to life, are open to threat. Because we fail to protect foundationally the youngest, the weakest, the most vulnerable amongst us, and the foundational right to life. That opens the door to a whole host of human rights violations, which it's very ironic to me that the side that claims to be for the underdog, claims to be for the oppressed, claims to be for the vulnerable and the weak, that they fail to see that. When you're pregnant, it is not just your body. And again, even if this is decided federally, it is still politicians, it is still the government. And in actuality, in 1973, a handful of unelected old men most of them white, all but one of them white, unconstitutionally decided that there was somehow, somewhere, a constitutionally protected right to an abortion. And because you like that outcome, you don't care that men were involved in the decision-making process. You don't care that white men were the ones who made the decision. You don't care that the government is the one who made the decision. You don't care that it was done unconstitutionally. You don't care that it was a power grab. You don't care because you like it you like abortion. Don't act like you are on the side of democracy or the letter of the law or protecting our American values or our constitution or not having old white men make decisions about your body because you're not. If you like the outcome, you're totally for it because you love abortion and you can't seem to tell the truth to save your life. Telling your supporters to Google Project 2025, sure, if you Google Project 2025, you're going to find a whole host of things, most of them inaccurate. And if you keep looking, eventually you'll probably find the actual document, which is hundreds of pages. You probably won't read it. And if you look far enough, you'll understand that Donald Trump has nothing to do with Project 2025 
and that the Heritage Foundation, the think tank that conceptualized Project 2025, has done this for the past several decades. It's just something they do. They write policies that they think would be beneficial for America, but it has nothing to do with Donald Trump. It has nothing to do with the GOP. It has nothing to do with anything. Telling your supporters to Google something, what good is that going to (laughs) do? Is that the research that you do? It's pathetic. The lies are just pathetic. And the fact that women fall for it, even more pathetic.